check it out. Okay, now, on three, two, three, go! DNA! DNA! Sarah, come on! Come on, read it! Come on, get the voice up! Talk to me! Talk to me! Talk to me! Come on, talk to me! Talk to me! He told us just go up there. We'll help you. If you have a question, we'll he'll help us. It's but you gotta you gotta be willing to, cause I mean if you start writing and once you start writing, you wanna you want people to hear your stories, your lines, and that once people uh, start listening to your stories or lines like I was saying. And they, they, they start liking them, you, you, you want to write more and more, and you get better. Buenos dias, Abre Caminos. Good morning, Abre Caminos. Good morning. Abre means to open, Caminos means the ways. One person who opens one path opens many paths. We are the Abre Caminos, and my name is Jim, Jim Bodin, and it's, uh, it's always great to be with, with you guys. And today we are reading our uh, essays, parts of our essays, from uh, the end of our, of our fall trimester when we uh, climbed the mountain to Machu Picchu. So you're reading those essays and you're also reading your letter poems to Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz. Sor Juana nació en, en uh, 1651, is the, is the third most important woman in Mexican history. And she uh, certainly was an Abre Caminos for all Latinas and also for the men, because we find images of ourselves also in her uh, path to liberation. I am Erica Valencia, and I'm reading my final essay. And this is my okay. The problems that I've had have changed my life. A life that I'm proud to have. A life that I wouldn't change for anything in the world. What used to hurt me now makes me laugh. I now discover that everything is possible, that coming from a migrant, low-income family will not hold me back, but instead produce the desire to continue and not give up. When I was younger, my dreams never included graduating from high school. It seemed to me as something too big, something I would never be able to reach. Now, after discovering my identity, I am proud to say that graduating from high school will be my beginning. I want to prove to my younger sisters that there is nothing in the world that can prevent you from reaching your dreams. I want to share and share with them that I, what I learned from becoming an Abre Caminos. Most important, I want to prove to myself that what I used to, that what I used to think about this class was a misinter misinterpretation. That Mr. Bodin's craziness will no longer, sh no longer scare me, but help me, but help me. I want to prove to myself that I am not wasting my time and that Mr. Bodin's gift is more valuable than any treasure, a gift that no one will ever take away from me, and that only helps. It was like a sac sacred place. <laughs> he, he said, it, this is the safest. If you go out to the world, the world out there is not safe. And why not do it in the classroom when it, it feels safe? So that's what he's always told us. And, it was, and that's basically true. My name is Jim Bodine, and I'm going to read a poem called At the Hispanic Achievers Award Banquet. Every obstacle in the way is part of the curriculum. We all want to be here, and everybody wants us. Everyone is legal and on scholarship. We praise our lives because we've all come this far. David Gutierrez, Noe, Valencia, Eva Sirata Valeria, BNA Cruz, Jacqueline Hernandez, five standing. We're here. Even praise can't say it. Alabanza or singing. 
everyone is thankful. We take these odds. We are one pueblo, barrio unido. There is no division. The mayor is a homeboy, alcalde como vato loco. Every scholarship is big, becas grandes para todos. Everyone has papers. We dress up in our hope. We don't answer any questions. No shadows, only the flashing and the lights of our cameras. The Patron is who he is. We go to school. Our social security cards are our own. We're surrounded by truth. Thank you. <laughs> You're on. <clears throat> Got, everybody's got the order, right? If I could just, uh, one. just one now. Okay. No, no, it's not practice. <laughs> now, this is everybody. We're on performance now, right? Go. Good afternoon. My name is Noel Valencia, and I'm reading a poem called "Las Tumbas Hablaron." Juana, con tu historia puedo mirar las Lágrimas de sangre y tumbas de mujeres. After a while, I started writing the poems and everything, and he makes you think in another way, and you feel good. Yeah, it's like experiencing yourself in words. Yeah, it's awesome. That class is awesome. Yeah, I enjoy that class. We really believe that, that students, that young writers can do work that is uh, important to this culture and important to this country and important to this uh, to uh, uh, real uh, culture making. And I almost said nation making, but this is uh, international work that, that we're doing here. And we're part of a, a multicultural world community, and that's part part of, uh, of who we are and part of what we're about. I'm going to um, read part of the interview that I had with my mom and um, then I'm going to switch over ending it with one of my um, poems. It kind of ties in together. And um, first of all, I'd like to talk about um, the picture that is on our book. It's from our dining room, and I wrote a little bit about that when I was, um, when Bodine and Mr. Prout went to my house and took a picture. Um, let me, let me just start. The dining room, okay, hold on. The dining room, I believe, is the heart of our family, the place of gran valor, of great value. Our dining room is the room with all, the, with all the power, the power, the room with all the power. The, the, this room, is the light of our home. To me, it is. it has a great meaning. My grandmother had a velorio, rosary or viewing here. This room makes me feel like my grandmother is, is always here with us. Our dining room, our dining room brings the whole family together once a day. Every night we gather here and say grace before we eat dinner together. This table and these walls capture capture so many images. During the, during the evening, after eating dinner, we can talk to each other about what happens during, during that day and what was funny about something we watched or did or did at work that day. Um, we, we tell a few jokes and then everyone goes and does it, goes their own way. This table in our dining room brings us together as a family and we have a lot of communication. This room, I think, that is this more than just a simple room. It is like our, like the heart of our family, the unity between our busy lives. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Tatiana Lazar, and I'm from Tijuana. I've been here about a year in Yakima. And um, I, like always, I always thank Mr. Rodin that he gave us uh, the opportunity to write in this book. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why, but I always seem to cry. And um, um, we wrote poems that helped us open up, um, well, they helped me open up uh, some of my struggles. And um, um, 
We represent by writing those poems like if we were climbing up a mountain. And for me, it was a mountain full of emotions that um, they always kept inside of me. It was a normal day. Dad had left a week ago. He said, I have a job to do. It won't take long. I was so attached to my father. It had been just one week. And I missed him so much. Adriana, my oldest sister, came into the room. Luciana, another sister, and I were talking. She told us that Dad wasn't coming back, that he was in jail. At first, I would write to him every day. And as the years passed, the days became weeks, and the weeks became months. And the months became seasons, until I stopped writing. I forgot about him, all the memories of who he was and of what we had faded away through the years. I tried so hard to remember him. Suddenly, without knowing, I killed him. Death is not always physical. You can kill someone by forgetting them. You can become death. I forgot about my father. He has died inside of me. But now as I look back, knowing that I survived such loss, I have learned so much. Every night that I cry, every moment that I felt alone, made me the strong and independent young woman that I am today. My senior year, I got into his class, and that's when I really found myself, like, found, found myself, because I was pretty lost. Like, that last one when I wrote about my mom, um, she's, she's like very inspirational like, to me. That's like my number one inspiration. Because everything that my mom has gone through, I've tried to change. So like, break the cycle, you know. And um, while I was taking his class, it made me realize like when we read a lot of the people that, people write letters to certain people. I wrote a couple letters as well. And like those different people kind of helped me with figuring out my struggles and that I don't have that much on me like other people do. I've got one more thing to say. Last thing, because I, I don't think we have enough time. Um, anybody can be in Abra Camino. You just got to notch those walls and keep going. Um, ever since uh, we started this journey with Mr. Bodian doing presentations, we've always ha uh, had positive um, things from people, and that, that is what keeps me going. Okay, I, I think we're about done, huh?